to have a car that I could drive fast off of the pavement. Okay, not like, oops, I bet you thought you were gonna get Kevin. <laughs> I'm one of Kevin's friends who, I don't know, like what do you want me to say? Hey there, I'm Daniel Sloan and I'm here to talk to you about my Frankenstein M3 wagon that I lovingly call the M3 Baru. You know, like Subaru, but the M3 that's combined with, well, never mind. This S54 swapped E46 wagon with all wheel drive happened to be for sale just outside of Denver. I immediately had the vision of turning it into an off pavement road trip adventure mobile uh, that could take on nearly any kind of terrain that. Uh, one can access off of a normal highway anyway. I had an E46 M3 convertible for nearly nine years, and I drove that car 90,000 miles all around the country. I used it as my daily driver for several years. There were some limitations on where I could really take the car. There are plenty of gravel roads, dirt roads that I wished I could have gone down safely, some of which I attempted anyway and got lucky and was able to get out. That's why I bought a Land Rover LR3. It's not quite as much fun to drive as an M3. So I wanted to find something that kind of fell in between that space. When I bought this car, it came lowered all the way on its KW coilovers. It had 18 inch wheels with low profile tires and wasn't really set up to do any kind of off-road driving at all. I knew there would be work to do to make it more suitable for longer distance driving off-road. So over the course of nearly 18 months, which was about 16 months longer than I thought it would take, I had the car repaired and shaken down and fixed again and adjusted here and there to get it to the point where I thought it was truly ready to go on a long distance adventure road trip with plenty of off pavement driving. The highlight reel of modifications to this car. First of all, shorter gearing. With a 391 final drive ratio, the effective gear ratios are closer together, which means a lower top speed, but also that shorter gearing means you can use more gears at lower speeds, which you will be traveling at on loose surfaces. So even at 40, 50 miles per hour, one can be in third gear and be close to or in the power band and really get to use the greatest gear on the BMW M3, which is third gear. <laughs> I also had a WaveTrack limited slip differential installed. WaveTrack differentials work in such a way that tend to be better for loose surfaces. So it's not just any limited slip, but it actually helps with the, you know, the power transfer between slipping wheels and the wheels with grip. Um, both on and off power. The car has reinforced suspension mounting points that have been welded in, so it's capable of taking harder bumps and hits than a normal E46 would be. It has 17-inch BMW Style 12 Steelys. If I were to hit a really big bump or rock 
it would be easy to fix the wheel or replace the wheel. I also think they look cool. The car has a six-speed manual from the 330XI. It mounts up to the S54 using a Z4M clutch. So the clutch pickup and feel is pretty similar to an M3. It's not exactly the same, but it feels pretty good. In the interior, it has E46 M3 seats, and it also has an E46 M3 steering wheel. So it feels like you're driving an M3 poor lumbar support and all. When I bought the car, it had the fender flares, which initially I was not a fan of at all. They've grown on me a little bit, and I think they accentuate the rally nature of the car. Oh, mud flaps. Yeah. Yeah. So why not buy a Subaru? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, Subaru doesn't make an STI wagon anymore. <laughs> The main reason why I didn't just buy a Subaru is because I love classic BMWs and I love the S54. So the idea of being able to use the S54 in an application that would normally be reserved for cars like a Subaru was really an exciting prospect for me. The S54 is a motorsports derived 3.2 liter straight six some say one of the greatest naturally aspirated engines of all time. Over 100 horsepower per liter. I suppose the, the main reason why I really love the S54 in this all-wheel drive wagon is I don't feel like I have to compromise the enjoyment of driving with accessing remote places in Oregon that normally could only be accessed you know, in a higher clearance vehicle, which are generally more boring to drive. Finally, when that time came and we set off on our trip in November of 2020, the rod bearings failed. I don't think that's a good sound. Just when we finally had a chance to prove this concept, the engine failed and those plans to prove that one could really have an off-road M3 were delayed. So the trip that we went on in June was, for me, was very much a, a bit of a redemption trip. I'm, I'm pleased to report that the engine did not fail again. The car really, for the most part, exceeded my expectations. We, we took the car through such harsh conditions not just because of unpaved roads and washboard gravel and steep grades and altitude changes, it was also close to 100 degrees the whole time we were driving. So we were driving the car upwards of 10, 12 hours a day with nearly that much running time on the engine, driving it hard, redoing corners, sliding it around, and the temperature gauge never budged. You know, the oil temp fluctuated a little bit, but within reasonable specification. And the car just took everything that we threw at it, which is exactly what I imagined it would be able to do because of the long history I've had with S54s and trusting that they are really robust, powerful, capable engines. And, and lest we forget the main purpose of the car, which is to make it like an M3, of course the car is still incredibly smooth and refined on pavement. And there's 
not much lost in terms of just daily drivability and comfort that one comes to expect from BMW and also the BMW M3. The brilliance of the BMW M3 is that it's a car you can use every single day without getting tired, without wearing yourself out. The M3 is supposed to be the everyday usable sports car and I don't think that's compromised with the M3 Baru except for the exhaust, you know. I don't, I don't know if you want to even touch on that. When you're driving down the highway, you easily forget that it's set up to be an off-road sports car or a rally car. It just feels like a normal BMW wagon and that's exactly what I was hoping for and um, what I, part of what I love so much about it. M M M Threatsa M M Threatsa M Threatsa W W R X M three.